Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by Andrea Elliott. How you doing, Andrea? Hi, good morning. We're doing great. How are you? <laughs> good. The Longhorns, Lady Longhorns. Andrea, of course, is the uh, wife of Jarrett Elliott, the Longhorn head volleyball coach. Uh, Texas and Coach Elliott, uh, he is going for his third national championship uh, later today at 2 o'clock on ABC. Uh, please make sure you check in. It's going to be – this is a – this is like bre record breaking or breaking new ground, I guess. It's the first women's college volleyball game that's ever going to be on national TV, not behind a paywall of ESPN or anything like that. And frankly, it involves two juggernauts of college college volleyball in Texas and Nebraska. But I know y'all aren't like, I don't know how to say this. Y'all are frenemies almost like you you don't like them they don't like you it's like the two heavyweights come into battle uh for the national championship uh, what do you have to say about that andrea i think it's so good for the sport it is amazing that um it will be televised on abc that two juggernauts of the sport in nebraska volleyball and texas volleyball will be facing each other uh, for a national championship and there are two really good programs um, that give the best visibility to the sport. Um, they're both, you know, universities put a lot of support into um, into making volleyball um, a nationwide sport uh, because it's so fun to watch. So it's going to be a great game, and I can't wait to um, be there cheering. <laughs> well, you you were there last year. You, I had you on this show. I told the, the our producer Matt that I had to get you back on the show because last year I had you on the show before the Elite Eight game against Ohio State. Uh, and so I said, I've got to get her back on the show because I'm a little superstitious. So we like what happened last year. So if, if you're back next year, you have to come back next year too. Just a okay. fair way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, let's talk a little bit about the team this year and people that haven't had a chance to watch them and that will watch them today. They're led by Madison Skinner, who is a phenomenal, phenomenal player. I watched on Thursday night, and she just in, – in that third set, she just kind of took over and was just unbelievable. The whole team did. But uh, talk a little bit about Maddie and some of the other key players that the Longhorns have. You know, from a fan perspective, you you see them improve every, every time they play. Um, Maddie is clearly a special athlete, and she is – a great competitor um, and she's worked really hard to create a good connection with uh, Ella, you know, which is a freshman setter and uh, coming in and being a freshman at Texas is not easy. You're carrying the load. It's like having a, a quarterback come in and just run your offense, run your team, especially when they've won last year. So there is a lot of self-imposed pleasure, uh, pressure to be perfect. Um, and then just, they, they worked really hard, you know, to, to create a good connection. And it's also Maddie's continuous growth. She played uh, opposite of Kentucky and she won a national championship there. She played uh, three rotations outside last year um, with Logan being the sixth rotation outside for us. And this year she's taking over the sixth rotation role. Um, I think it's just clicking at the right time. The team has done a really good job of, keep trusting what they do every day. And even if it's not perfect, it's going to click at the right time. And right now they're just playing great. Yeah, it's it's amazing just to watch from last year. Not only did Ella Swindell, the, the freshman out of Missouri, take over the setter role, uh, but you have other pieces. I mean, Emma Halter has moved from a defensive specialist to now she's the libero uh, instead of Zoe Fleck. You've got uh, people like Asia O'Neill who's back and, and certainly one of the if not an all first team all american certainly one of the best middles uh then you also add Molly Phillips, Jenna Winnis. Uh, I mean I don't even know how many I'm missing here. You added a, a young lady from the portal from Texas A&M Corpus Christi who's playing a lot. Uh, a yeah. yeah. Cecilia Kana's uh sister is also back playing and serving really well and playing for you guys. What, what I, I have I've got to ask you Andrea. I mean it's a lot of experience, I think, with a good amount of youth on this team. So it's like it's it's like two ends, right? You have Asia and Maddie and Molly Phillips who've been there from the game from 
jump, right? And then you add Emma moving into her new position and Ella being the setter. They've kind of, you said, you said, made the mention that they're kind of peaking at the right time. Is that because it took those younger players time to kind of mesh with the older and try to figure it all out together? Or is it just, yeah, go ahead. I don't necessarily know if it's just an age related thing. It's more, you know, there is different players in different positions. It's a new, different team. Um, it's completely different type of leadership. And I think that takes time. It takes time. Um, it would take time even with, you know, experienced players. I think, of course, that time would be shortened for different reasons. But th this team took its own journey, you know, and it was very fun to watch that they discovered their own identity. They were faced by different adversity along the journey. And the biggest ob observation, I would say, players like Bella, you know, everyone talks about Maddie and Asia, but players like Molly, players like Carissa, players like Kayle, um, players like Bella Burmark, they, they make the team so much better every day. And they, the entire unity of the girls, they refuse to lose. And, you know, they've, they've faced, they've, they found out about themselves that it is their superpower. They're so competitive and it's so fun to watch them play that, you know, last year you had the number one team in the country come in, in us, and there was a lot of uh, expectation and there was a lot of, um, you know, hope that it would finish the season the way it was supposed to. This year, you know, this team has taken a different route and where we came in, in a regional semifinal and finals as the non-favorites and same Thursday night against Wisconsin. And we're going into the same game today uh, with that mentality. So I am really excited to watch them compete because they are, you can't teach that. And that's something that they, they have innately. I've got to ask you about that Thursday night game because my daughter played volleyball growing up. And so I've watched a lot of, you know, all club ball and all that stuff. I don't know that I've ever seen a national semifinal or a high stakes volleyball game where two really, really good teams, you beat them 25, 13 and 25, 16 in the yeah. third and fourth sets. That's like unheard of. I mean, that's, that's like a blowout, right? In, in volleyball perspective, it really is right. Um, well, kind of. We, we, we won the first, um, and it was neck to neck, and then Wisconsin won the second, which is an, an unbelievable team. They're, they're good blockers. They got uh, freshman of the year, Shumarek, uh, in a couple of years ago. Uh, they're really, really good. They got their fresh um, player of the year this year in Sarah Franklin, and they're really, really good. I think they played... Uh, non-perfect and they've made a little bit more mistakes than they were used to and i think at the same time our team took it to a different gear and you know in sports when that happens then the outcome um it's 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 what we saw on thursday night it's it's a little bit more um of a you you'll see that the the scale lean towards one of the two teams that are competing i mean the, being there they were going hard at it and honestly until everyone stood up and put their horns up i didn't realize it was game point because it was so good it was really good to watch and they were just going back and forth and got momentum volleyball is a game of momentum and it goes and it sways um in a, in a very fast um manner so you have to kind of be able to regroup and regather that momentum and bring it back to your team it felt like they were in, it's like Michael Jordan calls it being in the zone. It felt yeah. like the Texas volleyball team was in the zone, those third and fourth sets. All right, you guys have Nebraska uh, mm -hmm. in the national championship game later today. Again, televised on ABC nationally at 2 o'clock Central Time. Uh, tell us a little bit about that team and how, how what their strengths are and, and that sort of stuff and what kind of game we can expect uh, later today. Um, I haven't watched them play much, but um, what I know, they are they're young and they're very talented. They are, you know, 
they can fire at all cylinders. They have really good attackers. They play really good defense. Um, they're a good blocking team. Um, the, the setter is a freshman and uh, same as, as our setter. So it will be really fun to see uh, two teams led by two freshmen um, in a national championship game. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Texas and Nebraska, there are no two bigger programs in uh, college volleyball. Uh, the Longhorns, Andrea, uh, going for their, uh, and your husband, going for his third national championship. I believe this is the, the 11th trip he and the, the women have made to the uh, Final Four in his time in Austin. Uh, so, look, I think from all of us, uh, Longhorns, we're rooting for you guys today. Uh, go out and uh, tell the girls good luck and hook them, okay? Thank you so much. Hook them. <laughs>